I'm here at St. Stephen's Catholic Church in Portland, Oregon, and today is the ninth and last day of our novena to St. Michael, the Archangel. And as we have been considering all nine choirs of angels, we come to the last choir, which is the angels. What is it that we ask for when we pray to St. Michael and the choir of angels? In our chaplet, we pray that by the intercession of St. Michael and the celestial choir of, of angels, the Lord grant us to be protected by them in this mortal life and conducted in the life to come to heaven. Protected by them and conducted by them uh, in the life to come to heaven. Now, of course, that presumes that we are obedient to them, that we listen to them, that we heed their advice, their counsel, and their warnings, and that we continue to seek the will of God and um, and the acts of God, the work of God in this life. Well, let's see what Dom Guéranger has to say about the angels. Thus then, the admirable distribution of offices among the choirs of heavenly spirits terminates in the function committed to the lowest rank, the guardianship of man for whom the universe subsists. The guardianship of man. So these are our guardian angels. Now there is another school of thought that says that the guardian angel may be chosen from any one of the nine choirs, depending on uh, what our, what our um, vocation is in life, our station in life, if we are uh, of a, a higher authority in this world, if we have a greater need, or that the um, different choirs of angels might be chosen from anyone among them to suit our, our own personality, our own challenges, uh, our trials, etc. But I think the general opinion would be that it is from the lowest choir, the angels, uh, that is entrusted the guardianship of man. Well, let's see what St. Thomas Aquinas has to say about this choir of angels. And his question, the question is, uh, question 113 of the guardianship of the good angels. And the third article is the question, whether to guard men belongs only to the lowest order of angels. We proceed thus to the third article, objection one. It would seem that the guardianship of men does not belong only to the lowest order of the angels. For Chrysostom says that the text from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 10, their angels in heaven, etc., is to be understood not of any angels, but of the highest. Therefore, the superior angels guard them. They, all right, well, that's objection one. Objection two, further, the apostle says that angels are sent to minister for them who shall receive the inheritance of salvation. And that from the epistle to the Hebrews, chapter one, verse 14. And thus it seems that the mission of the angels is directed to the guardianship of men. But five orders are sent in external ministry. And he refers back to his own question 112, article four. Therefore, all the angels of the five orders are deputed to the guardianship of men. Well, what are these five orders to which he refers? We look back to the fourth article of question 112, and he answers that to be sent to external ministry properly belongs to an angel according as he acts by divine command in respect of any corporeal creature, which is part of the execution of the divine ministry. Okay, by which he means uh, those angels that have um, uh, an external ministry other than those that are ministering to God directly around him. What are those angels that are entrusted to something uh, in the universe, uh, in creation, uh, preservation of species, um, the government of, of, of uh, the universe, um, the entrusted with uh, nations and, and churches and smaller communities and individual men? I think I've just maybe given this away. <laughs> All right, so he continues then. Now the angelic properties are manifested by their names, as Dionysius says, and therefore the angels of those orders are sent to external ministry, whose name signifies some kind of administration. 
But the name dominations does not signify any such administration, but only disposition and command in administering. On the other hand, the names of the inferior orders imply administration. For the angels and archangels are so called from announcing, the virtues and powers are so called in respect of some act, and it is right that the prince referring to the principalities, according to what Gregory says, be first among the workers. Hence it belongs to these five orders to be sent to external ministry and not to the four superior orders. Well, that seems concordant with what we've been talking about all along. So we have the, uh, we have the four orders that are right around the throne of God and the dominions ruling from the steps of the altar and then everything out from there, the powers, the virtues, the principalities, the archangels and angels have some sort of external concern, external ministry. So the question is then, could it belong to any of those five orders to be guardians of men? Well, let's continue then with objection three. Further, the guardianship of men, it, for the guardianship of men, it seems especially necessary to uh, coerce the demons, which belongs most of all to the powers, according to Gregory. So you remember that the powers are those who hold the spirits of wickedness in subjection. And we, uh, we uh, thought of them when we uh, considered the outer sanctuary below the altar steps and how holding the spirits of wickedness in subjection, it's very important that anything that happens in the sanctuary is orderly and beautiful and according to uh, and obedient to the ceremonies of the mass and the various liturgies, vespers and the divine office and such, sac other sacraments. Whatever happens in the sanctuary should be orderly, should be holy and should be beautiful. All right, we continue. Uh, and, and to work miracles, which belongs to the virtues. So the virtues are those who are entrusted uh, with the preservation of species, the movement of the heavens, and the, um, uh, and the laws of, of nature. So to work miracles then, uh, you know, if they have, um, if they govern the work or the movement of the heavens and the laws of nature, well, they would also be entrusted by God with the working of miracles. Of course, it is God who works the miracles, but through the agency of the virtues, and then some, some cases through the agency of a particular saint, living or more likely deceased. All right, we continue. Uh, okay. Therefore, these orders are also deputed to the work of guardianship and not only to the lowest orders, and not only to the lowest order, so that would be the powers and the virtues. On the contrary, in the Psalm, Psalm 90, the guardianship of men is attributed to the angels, who belong to the lowest order, according to Dionysius, which we've been reading from chapter 9. I answer that, as stated above, in answer 2, or in article 2, man is guarded in two ways, in one way by particular guardianship, according as to each man an angel is appointed to guard him, and such guardianship belongs to the lowest order of the angels, whose place it is, according to Gregory, to announce the lesser things. For it seems to be the least of the angelic offices to procure what concerns the salvation of only one man. The other kind of guardianship is universal, multiplied according to the different orders. For the more universal an agent is, the higher it is. Thus, the guardianship of the human race belongs to the order of principalities, or perhaps to the archangels, whom we call the angel princes. Hence, Michael, whom we call an archangel, is also styled one of the princes. Moreover, and so you recall here that the, that the archangels participate both in the principalities and in the angels' work, but are... Or participate in both and are between the both, so that um, they have that that sense of, of prince, princely um, status, but also that of of guardianship. All right. Uh, okay. Um, 
Thus, the guardianship of the human race belongs, of the human race as a whole, belongs to the order of principalities, or perhaps to the archangels, whom we call the angel princes. Hence, Michael, whom we call an archangel, is also styled one of the princes. Moreover, all corporeal natures are guarded by the virtues, and likewise the demons by the powers, and the good spirits by the principalities, according to Gregory's opinion. Now let's have, let's see what the reply to objection one is. So objection one was, it would seem that the guardianship of men does not belong only to the lowest order of angels, for Chrysostom says that the text, their angels in heaven, is to be understood not of any angels, but of the highest. Therefore the superior angels guard men. Reply to that objection. Chrysostom can be taken to mean the highest and the lowest order of angels. For as Dionysius says, Celestial Hierarchy, chapter 10, in each order there are first, middle, and last. It is, however, probable that the greater angels are deputed to keep those chosen by God for the higher degree of glory. So in other words, that between the principalities, the archangels and the angels, the angels would, um, would be given guardianship over everyone, or each individual person, one guardian angel per person, but that of the archangels and the principalities, since they are entrusted, the principalities with nations and with churches, by which I would presume that means uh, the, the, a diocese, whereas uh, the archangels are entrusted with smaller communities, which I would presume would be um, like a city or a, um, or a parish, and then the guardian angels would be over the individuals. But in the same, uh, along the same lines, we could say that the angels are um, entrusted to the guardianship of normal, everyday sort of men and women and children, whereas the archangels or principalities might be given as guardianship over those who are more important. For instance, like um, uh, the uh, one who is in charge of a nation uh, with the govern, government of a nation would be given a higher, a higher rank of, of angel. Or a bishop would be given a higher rank of angel. Or the pope would be given a higher rank of angel. All right, let's continue then. Reply to objection two. Objection two said, further the angel says, the apostle says that angels are sent to minister for them who shall receive the inheritance of salvation. And thus it seems that the mission of angels is directed to the guardianship of men, but five orders are sent in external ministry. Therefore, all the angels of the five orders are, are deputed to the guardianship of men. Well, let's see what his reply is. Reply, not all the angels who are sent have guardianship of individual men, but some orders have a universal guardianship, greater or less, as above explained. All right, well, we just went through that. And reply to objection three. Well, what does objection three say? Further, for the guardianship of men, it seems especially necessary to coerce the demons, which belongs most of all to the powers, according to Gregory, and to work miracles, which belongs to the virtues. Therefore, these orders are also deputed to the work of guardianship, and not only the lowest order. Reply to objection three. Even inferior angels exercise the office of the superior, as they share in their gifts, and they are executors of the superior's power. And in this way, all the angels of the lowest order can coerce the demons and work miracles. Well, there's very, very much more that we won't get to in this series, but I'm grateful that for this opportunity. You know, by leading you in these novenas, I get to, I get to study, I get to read, I get to ponder, meditate, and pray, and it's a great help to me. So, Eve, I guess, you know, if, however few people or however many people watch these videos, I'm still grateful for making them because it helps me to enter more deeply into this devotion. So I thank God for that. And I hope that this has been helpful for you as well. So we'll look forward to our next novena. Um, I will... Uh, See you at some point again. I can't say when, but uh, perhaps soon. But meanwhile, there are some good novenas coming up, and you can always look back to previous years 
If you look at the playlists on this uh, channel, you'll see coming up a novena for Emperor Karl uh, von Habsburg, Blessed Karl of Austria, and um, that will be coming up in October. No need to film a new series, but certainly we can revisit the series already filmed, and we will be praying the novena here in the church during that time. So I'll look forward to seeing you either here in the church or here in the church via the means of media. Well, God bless you, and thank God, and don't miss a day of prayer with us.